Hi guys, Hatch Comic again today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Today is the first of two must win matches. Roptic Texas, if they want to make the winner's racket to try and defend their title at Major 4. Big questions though being raised how good they've been in practice over the last couple of weekends. The coaches still suggesting Optic are the third best team behind the FaZe and Toronto guys that played last night, implying their practice has still been rather solid, at least behind the scenes. Lots of other fascinating storylines on the day. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. Before we get to the Optic stuff, we've got to talk about what happens between these two teams i don't really understand this series and i still can't really wrap my head around exactly what the vegas legion even are as a team right now because you know i didn't even mention right they weren't playing this game i imagine on the virginia server because la thieves based out in la so virginia would be probably too close to where the vegas boys are based on you know no, no one in vegas obviously because there's no facility they're over there on the east coast generally attaches in texas so i don't think they'd have been on the virginia server whatever it was they smoked Thieves game one. Wasn't even close. It's like, this is what Legion were doing to New York. This is what they were doing at times to Optic. Okay, it wasn't this bad, but you know what I'm saying? Like, they beat Surge. They beat Optic. They beat New York back to back to back. Then they got 3-0'd by Gorillas, And now they get completely crushed by Thieves after a dominant game one. It's like, what is this Legion team? I just don't get it. It's almost like they're cursed in a way that whenever... They look like and they try and play well enough to qualify for the world championship. The COD gods tell them, guys, you're Paris Legion still, you know, we ain't buying it and decide that it ain't going to happen. This is a crazy 1v3 from Geo as well, which put them in a position that they could have gone on to win the map too. They didn't. They lose the game too. Then Dan Ghosty like completely takes over basically and smoked them on the game three. This one wasn't even close. And then game four was, I mean, look at the trades. They just don't exist. And map four was insane. Right? I don't know if you guys remember when Thieves played Vegas in, I think it was the first match of the major three qualifying just before they got rid of Purge Naseem, and they obviously brought in Naseem and all the drama happened as a result of that. They played Thieves against Vegas on 6-star, and Vegas got 49 point clouds. I think it was 250 to 49, and it was so bad that Vegas, it seemed at that point, basically made the call to drop Purge. But apparently it's going to happen again, because Thieves come in here, and they, <laughs> they hit them with the 45-point club. I mean, it's honestly insane, is it not, to see... A team get 50 point clubs on the same map by the same team twice in a season. Like, I don't think we've ever seen anything like that quite before. It was Ghost that really took over here. But it's just like Legion lose the plot, don't they? Like, how do you go from winning game one in an absolute demolition job? I mean, look at this. The Karachi was 251.35, not even close. How do you go from that to getting 50 point clubs map four? Like, what is actually going on over there? Ghost drops at 1.7, so, you know, not too bad. But the Vegas boys and Johnny just got, you know, he had a really rough time in this series. I just don't understand what's going on with Vegas. I don't even know if I want to understand. We got some absolutely insane tweeted in the timeline here as a result of this one. And look, the Los Angeles Thieves, this in many ways was kind of a must win. Today for the Vegas Legion is now effectively a must win for them up against the Minnesota Rocker. Man, at the champs race is crazy. Honestly, really what I'm looking at from most of these teams that are fighting to make the world championship is if they do make it does it matter as in if they make it to the world championship can they actually be a force when it comes to a LAN environment I think the other concern is for Vegas that in the series they've played that haven't been on the Virginia server I think they might have won one out of four or something and to be fair I think they play Rocker today I think based in Texas so probably they'll be on the Virginia server so Look, we're going to see if there's anything about that. But have a look at the way this is set up right now. Boston, let's talk about them in a few minutes. Gorillas, Minnesota, Vegas, Ravens, all at 140. Thieves have separated themselves somewhat at 155. And the good position that puts Thieves in is the fact that if they get top eight at the major, they'll get to 170 by getting 15 points. And 170 will be enough, right? I'm pretty sure that 170 is going to be enough. It almost certainly will be. Miami are already there after their victory yesterday, so they've basically qualified. Thieves can get there with one more win on land. But the issue is that there could be a real spanner in the works down there in the losers' brackets by the name of Optic Texas. We'll get to in a 
second. There was also this that was going down between Scrappy and Zuma on the MCW, you know, the four bullet kill that's been talked about a lot. Like it was kind of the case at the start of the season. The pros don't like it. I think it would be nice if the pros or if the developers, let's say, reverted it back. There was a bit of response as well, as we'll see in a second, to um, the Optic Boys moving back to the Hex quarters, right? So this was confirmed in the process episode yesterday that the facility in the heart of downtown Dallas probably going to be moving out of that one back to the Hex quarters in some capacity. Here's Dashi actually as well. I didn't even notice yesterday here in the foreground. We know that he loves this place, but um, you know I don't know exactly what the timeline is going to be of this type of transition. But a couple of clips to share for you guys. Scrappy was having a few words to say on Boston here, basically saying that when they practice against them, they just slam Boston every time. There's been some interesting speculation on the fact that Boston actually their practice. I know that people always say this, but apparently Boston's practice isn't like as bad as you'd think it is. They actually are competitive-ish, but it comes to match day and they just get absolutely world-starred. And Scrappy says that, yeah, they've been world-starring them when they've been scrimming against them. But yeah, a couple of other clips. One little snippet from the upcoming process episode on exactly how things are going for Optic Texas behind the scenes. Some few interesting words said in that. And then also Scumpy cranking that hog. Hey, Scrap, you scrimmed today? Uh, yeah. Who'd you guys scrim? <laughs> New York and Boston. How'd it go? I went good. I just <laughs> slapped Boston with my nuts, so. Yeah, well, oh, you slapped Boston man, like, with your nuts, sack? Yeah. So Not just me, just, just the whole team in general. Yeah, like you guys just dismantled them today. Yeah. They're horrible. I'm sorry, they're horrible. Like, I, I like them all individually as people, but they're fucking horrible. Wow. Bro, like, I'm sorry, but, like, it should tell you something that they bring in Shawnee, and th they looked, bro, Boston looked the best all year with fucking Shawnee, bro. And Shawnee, like, is just a fundamental player. They got it all fucked up. They got pressing on a main sub. They got pressing on a fucking sub. Yeah, I don't think it's just all on Snoopy, bro. Nah, nah, it's not. I'm not saying it is. Snoopy's got me. He mechanically is really good. He might yes. be making some dumb decisions in game and shit. But it's the whole team. It's a whole team for sure. Bro, you're not even getting, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but they just wasted my time today. Really? It was a waste of my time. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I, I'm on it. Like, bro, I'm not, like, I'm practicing. Bro, I practice to get better every day, but when I... I wonder if they try in scrims because... Bro, do you, did you hear my data? Bro, I played three maps versus New York, and I played these bums. <laughs> like, I, I just felt like I learned nothing today. And, and that's not a good feeling, bro. I want to come out of every day feeling productive. All right, I'm going to tell a pretty personal story. Wait, that's us Don't right there. Don't tell me you touched yourself. I've there. cranked one singular, singular time no, in the hex didn't. quarters, no, and it was didn't. against that wall. No, you didn't. I was looking over my shoulder. No, you didn't. Huh? No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. What? You yeah. are great. How many times in this office? Are you being never serious? Never here. Never here. Wait, are you being serious? You don't have a camera. Why would I lie about that? You gotta be lying. Why the f would I lie about that, brother? You jerked off in the hex quarters. One singular time. Wait, and yo, I was tweaking because there were cameras and shit. I kept looking into the camera. <laughs> yo, what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> that is actually that is actually bizarre. I would have took that where word did it, grave. Where did it go? That is bizarre. <laughs> Are you being serious? Huh? That hey, is don't bizarre. shame him. I'm sure. Don't. What? <laughs> I am shaming the fuck. That is bizarre, dude. Hey, Fuck your problem, buddy. This is a safe place. That it was at like is... three in the morning. That is ballistic, dude. I that didn't have is... anywhere to go. That is ballistic. The bathroom or something? I do what I want and I do what I please. That is crazy. Dude. That's what I it's fucking do. See, heck, no, I see. You can't really say they're regressing until the next major. If they go to the major and they get top, whatever six, eight, whatever the fuck it may be, then you can say something. <laughs> Anybody to talk about complacency, you just don't know shit. How many championships do you have and how many professional matches have you played in to have this level of, of understanding of the game which allows you to determine what is wrong with the team so far removed from where you sit today? So swiftly moving on, of course, the boys are talking about it. Even Scump was in the background of this kind of discussing, like, whatever happens online happens online. At the major, that's when it's a different story. If they get top six, top eight, or even worse, of course, which would be difficult, but if they do at the major, then it's then it's a talking point, right? Going into the world championship. But until now it's online, you know, talking about the complacency, whatever might have set in. It's obviously difficult to weigh up ever. I mean, when a team wins an event and they don't win the next event, have they got complacent? Or is it that other teams have caught up and worked harder and it's difficult to stay on top of them? What 
watching all their VOD, whatever the case is. So difficult to look at it from either way, as they kind of mentioned in the background of that clip. We shall get more evidence when the actual major comes around. But this was the coaches poll that they put together here. So Easy Mac and the boys been asking the coaches over the last couple of days, where do you rank the teams? This is what they currently have. And still, according to the coaches, there's been no change in terms of where Optic really lie. They're still third, but, you know, I guess after the major, most, most coaches have probably said they're number one, to be fair. But even that would have been you know, difficult to do, maybe because it was just one day of an absolute masterclass, whereas Faye is until that point look really strong. And then, of course, Optic Sam Toronto in the finals. So, yes, Optic aren't considered by any coach to be the best team, but they're certainly still right up there. This is what the coaches poll says. So just to make it clear here, basically 11 coaches will vote per team because Faze's coach won't be voting on their own team. There are 11 points for getting selected as the number one. One point for placing 11th because you're not voting for 12 teams because if I'm the coach of a certain team, I'm not ranking my own team. So basically Faze got voted number one by everybody. So, you know, every basically coach put them as number one. That's why they get 121 points. Toronto not far behind at 109. So pretty unanimously by the coaches the second best team and well yesterday Toronto beat FaZe so does that change the mind of some of the coaches and the players as to who actually are the big favorites going into major four but after that you then have a tie between Optic and 95 and then actually New York Subway is also at 95 so um, the coaches are pretty torn on who's better right now and you know this obviously is interesting these coaches polls because they don't just include what we see in matches they also include what the coaches see what the practice is like what the quality of practice is against these teams and how Optic are still faring in scrims with respect to their actual matches. They're still clearly pretty good, but you know, they're not as good as they were previously, right? 95 points, same as the subliners, and even Optic themselves have kind of implied that at some points this year, subliners don't play the best fundamental COD in practice, although they may now be getting better. After that, though, it then goes down quite substantially. But it's definitely interesting to see here that Surge were voted very high, really. I mean, they're at 82 points, which is substantially ahead of Vegas and then Miami. Despite the fact that I had Miami beating Surge yesterday, which they did, and, um, you know, maybe Surge, like, if you put Surge against the other 11 teams in the league and you have them play all other 11, will they produce a better return than Miami? will against the other 11 there's maybe an argument to be made there but for some reason in that particular series I did think that Miami were gonna be the better team and win which they did obviously it was close it was game five but um yeah maybe still Miami getting somewhat underlooked here I think to some extent the fact that the coach is up them seventh obviously Vegas sixth but I'm not sure they'd say that anymore after yesterday's results and who knows what's going to happen today then Thieves in eight so according to the pros or according to the coaches those are your top eight teams. It's Thieves, it's Legion, and then obviously Surge and Miami have made it basically based on the numbers. But out of the other teams that are really on the cusp, they had Legion being the best team. That's no longer so clear. Ravens, they think, are ninth. Then you've got a quite significant drop-off really down to Minnesota Rocker and then down to the Los Angeles Grillers. And then, of course, you know, we don't want to talk about this. We're voted last by every single coach. So, you know, just interesting to look at, really. And if you look at those numbers and you put them into a team, Tier list, you effectively find the following with Phase Ultra Optic New York, the top four being the top four. And then it went down effectively to the Los Angeles Thieves. Funny that we've got F tier Boston over here on the right hand side. Not even worth talking about them. But according to the coaches, especially the way that it stands now with Surge and Miami looking very good to make the world championship, they have Thieves and they have Vegas making it. Although that may be somewhat less clear after the results of yesterday. And who knows what's going to happen after the results of today. So here we go again. Four matches. The final four match day, qualifier match day of the entire season. We talked about it yesterday. This is the last weekend's. Optic, by the way, just to confirm, because Thieves won that series and the way that the standings currently are this stage... Optic needs to win both series to make winners. Like, there's no other way to do it. They can't hope for some tiebreakers. They absolutely must beat Boston, and they absolutely must beat Toronto. And if they do, they will get to the winner's bracket, but they will need to get the best possible seed they can, because you don't really want to go in as the eighth seed and play a really challenging round one game. You know, it's not the end of the world, but it's obviously not ideal. So if Optic were to, like, 3-0 both series, then they'd be looking at a pretty good seeding, really. Yes, they'd only have three wins, but that have a really good map count differential, all this type of stuff. So, for example, tonight against Boston, Optic not just need to win, 
but they kind of need to win quite emphatically because if they don't, even if they do beat Toronto, things could get a little bit suspect, right? But tonight is as follows. Miami FaZe. This is going to be interesting. They played at the Major. Miami won a map off them, but then FaZe smoked in the rest of the series. To be honest, I'm expecting a similar thing, but this will be quite telling, right? If Miami can win another search and destroy, like if they can take a search or phase or something, even if they can maybe take it to five, that's going to be quite something to see, like whether Miami are really capable of being a dark horse. I think this is going to be quite telling this series. If Miami gets smoked, it's like, okay, another fifth best team candidate that isn't really going to be good enough. But that series is going to be interesting. Surge Gorillas is pretty big because if Surge win, they basically lock up champs. If Gorillas win which they may, but then again, they beat Vegas the other day, and Vegas looked awful against Thieves after game one, so I'm not so convinced that, like, Gorillas are back or anything. I am going to take Surge in that, but Gorillas would still keep their hopes alive. Boston Optic, I don't really want to talk about, but, you know, you got to think, right? So, like, I mean, if there was ever a time for Boston to pull off something incredible, it would be today, but I just can't see how in good faith I can predict that. And then Minnesota Vegas. This is a massively important series of the day. The final one to close out the day. Minnesota desperately need the 10 points. Vegas desperately need the 10 points. This is just going to be so huge in the championship qualification race. But as I said, this may well be a Virginia server game. And, uh, you know, we know what that may potentially mean. So if you haven't watched your thoughts in the comments, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.